Yeah, that's right. Wow! Ooh! Cow! I'm home. So we're about to head down this mountain in Shenandoah National Park in our gas motor home. And I've actually been dreading this more than coming up the mountain. Just not looking forward to it. But we take it slow, we're gonna get down there. It's probably one of those days I wish I had a diesel, but. So mountain driving in this thing. <laughs> It's not fun. First of all, I don't enjoy having people lined up behind me. <laughs> and then second of all, it's actually worse coming uh, down the mountain than it was going up the mountain. So you're just braking the whole way. It just makes me paranoid because I can smell my brakes sometimes. If you're driving a, a gas motorhome like this in the mountains, uh, first of all, keep it in a low gear, which either a low gear or at least put it in tow haul mode. Uh, tow haul mode will kind of do the low gears for you. And the second of all, don't be afraid, if you've got a tow vehicle behind you with a motorhome, just un unhook your tow vehicle uh, and then drive the mountain and hook it back up when you get down to the bottom. As far as our gas one, it, do it does pretty well. Uh, we haven't taken it to Colorado yet, but we were at you know, 3,300 feet where we were at in Virginia. Probably exceeded my expectations just a little bit so far. And this place doesn't have full hookups, but it does have electric at least, <laughs> and it has cell phone signal. So we're fine with this place. It's 37 bucks a night instead of, it's about 70 plus for a lot of the other places we looked at close to DC. So we're gonna fill up our water tank before we get into our site. And then we can dump at the dump station as needed. We made it into our campsite at Little Bennett and uh, Pretty nice. Uh, you get a little bit of privacy with these. This is a county park, so we've actually got some trees around us. Gas versus diesel. Uh, we did look at diesels. The big pros for gas, it's gonna be cheaper. Uh, you're talking 30-40% cheaper than a diesel. It's more family friendly as far as the layouts typically. A little bit easier to fill up on fuel. Like if here's your gas station. All the new ones are starting to go where the lanes are facing this way. These are difficult with a large RV because when you pull in, it's hard to make this turn. You can kind of pull in and try to swing around to this last one. What we look for you want these side lanes like this. So you can pull in, here's the entrance. You pull in, you come in, and then you go out. The pros on the diesel, smoother ride. You get better braking with the diesel, better acceleration. Some of your cheaper, dirt cheap diesels actually are closer to on par with the gas, but in general, you're getting better acceleration with the diesel. Um, you can pull more weight. Your gas is usually only going to pull 5,000 pounds or less. Your diesel, 10,000 pounds or less in general. It's going to be easier in the mountains because you can accelerate up the mountain easier and when you're coming down, it's going to have better braking coming down the mountain. Uh, something that's kind of a wash, mileage. Your diesels are going to get better mileage. We're going to middle right here. Your diesel is going to better, get better mileage technically, but your diesel costs more than your gas. But if it's a diesel pusher with the engine in the back, it's going to be a quieter ride as well. Some of your gas engines are supposed to be insanely loud. Ours actually isn't that bad. So it really depends on the manufacturer on the gas too. If you get a higher end gas, um, a Numar, a Tiffin, something like that, this gap between these two isn't going to be as bad. But pretty much all your diesels that have the engine in the back are going to be quieter than a gas. If you can afford a diesel, go for a diesel for sure. 
for us, I could get a four-year-old gas or I'd get about a 10-year diesel. And the problem I was having when I went and inspected these 10-year-old diesels, at 10 years, stuff starts falling apart. You know, the, the roof starts having issues, your appliances start having issues, the tires start having issues, the awnings start having issues. Unless they've kept it indoors or something like that, you're gonna have this stuff start falling apart at 10 years. And I knew there's already enough maintenance with a motorhome. I didn't want more maintenance right out of the box with everything I had with it. We went with the four-year-old gas and it had been in storage for a year. It was really only like around three years old. <laughs> so, and we've had very few issues with anything to be honest on it. Marissa can always find something to look at in town and uh, we know there's a Petco. So that's like uh, our free mini zoo for Hensley. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna go check out the Petco as well. Hensley, inside voice. You're gonna scare the cat. Cat, cat, cat. Yeah, don't you hear? That's right. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Cat. We've been doing this for an hour now. <laughs> Has it been an hour? It feels like an hour. Yeah, about 20 minutes. <laughs> it says, I found a home. She's more excited in here than she was at the zoo. This is our compromise for uh, not buying an animal. <laughs> Can we just come and visit them? <laughs> She's even more wired on the days where she's cooped up in her seat. Where she travels. Goodness, yeah. man. We're running around wild. Look in there. It's a lizard, that's right. So I've got my drone, and I really need to get some practice with it. A lot of from what I'm reading and what I'm experiencing with the drone, it's just a lot of practice. Unfortunately, we're in the middle of the woods. <laughs> uh, so it's gonna make it a little more difficult to fly this thing high, but I'm gonna give it a shot. <laughs> We've got a, a little bit of a gap. <laughs> 